Hello, friends. As I continue to glide down the tranquil waters of the Indus River, I reflect on the vibrant and bustling life that once thrived along these banks. The Indus Valley civilization, with its well-planned cities and impressive infrastructure, wasn't just a place of trade and commerce. It was a society filled with rich traditions, daily routines, and a deep connection to the river and the land. Today, I want to take you on a journey into the everyday lives of the people who lived in this ancient civilization. And as we float along, we'll try to imagine what life might have been like in Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. As I paddle, I picture the houses that line the streets of these cities. They weren't grand palaces or towering monuments, but rather, they were practical and designed for comfort. Most homes in the Indus Valley were made from baked bricks with flat roofs that provided a space to rest and enjoy the evening breeze. The houses were built close together, forming tight-knit communities. Inside, they had small courtyards where families would gather, and many homes had their own wells, ensuring that water was never far away. These homes were an indication of the advanced planning that went into city design. Despite the lack of grand monuments, the people of the Indus Valley focused on creating a well-organized and functional environment for daily living. As I continue my canoe ride, I imagine the markets that filled the streets, where people from all walks of life came together to trade goods. The Indus Valley was a place where commerce thrived, and the streets were bustling with merchants selling everything from food to textiles. The markets were filled with the scent of fresh vegetables, dried fruits, and exotic goods brought from faraway lands. Farmers, artisans, and traders would have been busy going about their work, exchanging goods, negotiating prices, and completing transactions. There were artisans who crafted pottery, weavers who made textiles, and metalworkers who created jewelry and tools. The bustling markets would have been an essential part of everyday life. But it wasn't all about work. As I continue down the river, I think about the leisure activities that the people of the Indus Valley might have enjoyed. The people of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro had a rich and active social life. They likely enjoyed music, dancing, and storytelling, much like other ancient cultures. Toys found in excavations, such as small figurines and miniature carts, suggest that children also had their share of fun. These toys might have been used in play, but they also give us insight into the daily life and imagination of the people. It's easy to picture a family gathering in the courtyard after a long day of work, telling stories or playing games, enjoying simple moments of togetherness. When I think about the food that sustained the people of the Indus Valley, I imagine that their diet was varied and nutritious. The fertile land around the Indus River allowed them to grow a wide range of crops. Wheat and barley were staples of their diet, and they also cultivated peas, lentils, and other legumes. Fruits such as dates, figs, and melons were enjoyed by the people, and evidence of fishing suggests that they also consumed fish from the river. Livestock was important, and the people raised cattle, goats, and sheep for milk, meat, and wool. As I paddle along, I can almost imagine the aroma of freshly baked bread and the rich taste of wholesome grains that would have been part of their daily meals. In addition to food, the people of the Indus Valley paid great attention to cleanliness and hygiene. Evidence from the cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro shows that they had an advanced drainage system that was well ahead of its time. Every house was connected to a sewer system and the streets had covered drains to carry away wastewater. Public bathhouses, such as the famous Great Bath in Mohenjo-Daro, were important spaces for social and religious gatherings. These bathhouses were meticulously constructed with well-planned water channels and a deep rectangular pool. They suggest that cleanliness was not only a practical concern, but also an important part of their daily ritual. The people of the Indus Valley were also highly skilled in craftsmanship. As I glide along the river, I picture the artisans sitting at their workstations, creating intricate jewelry, beads, and pottery. They had access to a wide variety of raw materials, including clay, copper, ivory, and semi-precious stones. The bead-making industry was particularly important, and these tiny ornaments were crafted with such care that some of the beads have been found as far away as Mesopotamia. The craftsmanship of the people of the Indus Valley was a testament to their skill and creativity, and their products were in high demand across the ancient world. 
But daily life in the Indus Valley wasn't all about work, food, and craft. The river itself played a central role in the lives of the people. It provided water for agriculture, served as a major trade route, and, and was a source of sustenance and transport. The people of the Indus Valley would have relied heavily on the rhythms of the river to plan their agricultural cycles and trade expeditions. The river was also a spiritual and symbolic presence, representing life, prosperity, and fertility. As I paddle down the river, I reflect on how these details of daily life paint a picture of a society that was not just advanced in terms of infrastructure and technology, but also in their sense of community, culture, and creativity. They were people who valued cleanliness, organized living, and craftsmanship. They worked hard, but they also enjoyed moments of leisure, social gatherings, and family time. And yet, as I glide further into the heart of the Indus Valley, I wonder about the spiritual and religious beliefs that gave meaning to their everyday existence. What did they believe in? How did they perceive the world around them? What role did religion play in shaping their lives and their interactions with the environment? These questions bring me to the topic of our next episode, religion and belief systems in the Indus Valley civilization. How did their beliefs influence their daily routines, and what can we learn from the remnants of their religious practices? Join me in the next episode as we explore the spiritual world of the Indus Valley people and unravel the mysteries of their religious practices.